everybody, and welcome to the Everything VoiceOver Podcast. My name is Justin D. Torres. The Everything VoiceOver Podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about uh, doing an in-depth review of Voices.com. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, why are we reviewing Voices.com? Why are we reviewing play-to-play sites? You talk about that a lot on podcasts, but I think it's a very... Sp- specific to people out there who are new because they need to know about these things and especially an updated in-depth review is something that people need to know. I usually do a lot of comparison reviews. I did a lot of, uh, I even did videos on uh, pay-to-play shootouts to to talk about the numbers, but I think if people want to learn about a specific one, why not have a full podcast dedicated to very specific pay-to-play sites? And this is going to be it. This is going to be the review, in-depth review of Voices.com. Um, so, you know, let's go for the initial definition. I'll go quick through it. A pay-to-play site is a site that gives you multiple auditions. You give them the auditions back to them. And if you are selected, you'll be recording the project itself. Uh, so you will need a home studio and the ability to edit, record, and produce jobs. In return, you will get paid for said jobs. That's what a pay-to-play site is. That's all you need to know. And if you have those little things and specifically ready for yourself, then you can be a part of a pay-to-play site and try and make money and have your uh, take the gamble of trying to make your money on pay-to-play sites. Now, the cost of Voices.com uh, is $350 per year or $400 per year. I think it's gone up to $400 this year. Uh, if you're already a part of the site, you may actually be grandfathered in at a lower rate of $350, but as a new person, it might be stuck at 400 for you, which is a lot of money. Believe me, it's a lot of money, and and I'm going to try and tell you all the information you need to know about Voices.com to really get you thinking about it. Um, the amount of auditions you get from Voices.com is by far the number one as far as quantity of auditions. You uh, It gives you chances at lots and lots of jobs. If you go to everythingvoiceover.com's YouTube site and go to the pay-to-play auditions, you will see that they won out every week more numbers uh, by a significant amount, usually 50, 60 jobs a week. And uh, and also, uh, when I was doing those jobs, I was I was cutting down jobs that were lower on the lower end of $100. Or if I saw really bad screw jobs, like, uh, like, like national TV commercials for a small amount of money, I just deleted those, and I think you should do that too. Know what you're going out for, know what you're auditioning for, and know what your rates are. Do not lowball if you get just for a job. Believe me, there are low jobs that are worth... $100, you know, a $100 national TV commercial, which I haven't seen on Voices.com. I've seen maybe $500 ones, maybe 700 which are still on the low end. But a, a $100 voiceover television commercial is very different than a $100 uh, internal, um, internal, you know, presentation. The $100 in- internal presentation is something they can use inside of their company and whatnot. It is probably worth around $100. Whereas a TV commercial, if you're watching the Super Bowl and you hear your voice, you're going to be wondering why you did it for $100. Um, So moving on, the amount of auditions that you get from Voices.com is huge. Huge. It's much better than Voice123, much better than Voice Realm, Badalgo, beat everyone out by a large number. So no one comes close to them as far as the amount of auditions. Now the quality of auditions, that's the question of the year here, what are the quality of auditions? Well, they have a minimum of $100 per job. It used to be a minimum of $100 and then they take their cut off of that $100. They do it differently now. If you do a $100 job, they will add on their fee on top of it so the client pays say $115, $117 and then you get your $100 and they get paid on top of that for the job itself. Now the quality, you know, um, this is uh, just the $100 minimum is something that a lot of other jobs, other pay to play sites do not have. You will never see an $85 or no budget job on voices.com. So their low end is $100, just so you know. Now, will you see bad jobs? Yes, you'll see like, you'll see like jobs that are maybe $100 that maybe a thousand words. Don't do that. 250 at least, minimum, or even more. Um, you know, on occasion you'll see, you know, a crappy $750 TV commercial. Don't do it. Do do it. It's up to you. Um, avoid those if you can. And I've also seen TV job commercials for 2000 and 5000 of uh, the 2000 to 5000 range as well. So they do exist. The best of the best jobs exist here, and also the lower end jobs exist too. Uh, read and delete auditions you do not want to audition for. 
Now, what is their system of grading auditions? Now you're probably wondering, why do you want to grade auditions? Well, you want to know if how you did. You want to know if you have a chance at the job. You just don't send it out in the atmosphere and, and get nothing out of it. That's what a lot of other pay-to-play sites does. But there are, for these big ones, Voice.com, Voice123, they have a system of grading auditions. Now, um, what uh, they, their system for grading auditions is that if you go into the answered section of their website, you see, you'll see your auditions put up, and you'll see either a thumbs up or a or a an ear an ear or nothing thumbs up means you did good ear means it was listened to so uh, if you are heard if you got the ear congratulations you did what you you have a chance if you've got a thumbs up congratulations they like you you have an even better chance and now that is the extent of the grading system I have won jobs with just an ear and I have won jobs with thumbs up and neither does one or the other uh, get you a better chance. All you know is that if you have a thumbs up, I've never uh, won a job where I didn't get an ear or a thumbs up. They have to at least listen to you for you to get the job. Now, uh, what is their system of feedback? Now, this is the, this is a cool thing about Voices.com. Every job you complete has the opportunity to give you a five star rating after it's completed, after the job is completed, along with a review or a testimonial. And a lot of the clients do that. They will say that they like you, or good, and you have the opportunity to rate them as a client. Say that they're a good client, that they work well together, that they don't ask for many pickups. They're very good at communicating. So you have this system where clients can rate the the vo- voiceovers, and the voiceovers can rate the clients. It's a good system and also it's built in for when you are going if you have a system of a lot of uh where you need testimonials and whatnot and you have a website this is a good way to to get all that feedback and put it somewhere because there's no um system of feedback on all the other pay-to-play sites after you've gotten the job done this is the only one that's there so you can see how clients work and see that they see who they are and have them rate your job as you have worked with them now it'd be a good time to say that the Everything VoiceOver podcast is brought to you by the Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Now let's get into the gravy part of it, the real stuff that people want to know about, and that is how much money do they take? How much do they take for? How much are they ripping from you? How much are they ripping you off? Uh, you know, apart from the three hundred fifty dollars to four hundred, how much are they just taking from you? Well, first of all, you should know that an average agent takes about fifteen percent. 15% off of you. That's that's what an average agent does. Maybe even a 10%. But uh, for, from what from what I've been, it's pretty much pretty consistent 15%. So how much does Voices.com take? Because they are the, I've heard of them as the unnamed, the unnamed or the, the, the uh, what do they call it? <laughs> what is it? What's, uh, oh God, I, for, I forgot the villain from Harry Potter. Anyway, it will, Voldemort, the Voldemort of beta play sites um well how much do they take well you have an opportunity to bid on a job some are just one price maybe 100 150 bucks 250 a thousand bucks so if there are one price then you bid the price you can't bid under you can't bid over just the price and some are a range of prices like 250 to 500 dollars 100 to 250 dollars 1000 to 2000 dollars um when you get into that range section uh, well, let's, let's, let's talk about what Voices.com takes. First off, regardless of what you bid, or no, actually, regarding what you bid, on the exact amount that what you bid, Voices.com will add an extra 15 to 17% on top of that and take their cut from it. Okay? So, if I bid $250, the client gets charged $300, and Voices takes their $50 cut. Okay? So, if I bid $250, I'm getting $250. Okay, um, but the client is paying more. Now here's the rub: How much did the client really budget for it? Now this is the slippery slope that everyone's talking about, and it's totally understandable because they are a company; they are not an agency. Voices has an option for clients to represent to for clients to choose Voices.com to represent them and use Voices.com employees to go out and find their job and put up the audition and do everything. So like they'll call up voices.com, get someone to be like, would you like us to do it for you? And so just, and then they'll be like, okay, they'll explain their stuff to a, a uh, voices.com employee. They will put it up and they will work with the clients and try and get all this. They will be an, another middleman in between the client and you. They'll place an actual employee between you and the client. And, uh, and you know, the client, the client may have like a $350 budget, 
and they say, I want to use Voices.com to do that. They could do it for me to connect us. And they'll then Voices.com will put it up for maybe two hundred fifty dollars. And then on top of that, so so they're already Voices.com is already putting in their hundred dollar payment for the usage of their employees. Now, if I'm a voiceover artist and I'm like, oh, it's one hundred to two hundred fifty, I'm gonna I'm gonna bid at one hundred. And God knows that's totally fine. I did that when I was first starting out. I was underbidding everything, and I made a decent living from that. Now I'm at the higher end, so I can bid higher. Now, but the person who undercuts the job, I'm assuming that the money goes to voices. I don't know if it goes to the client or if it, if it, I'm assuming that that extra $150 in the budget probably goes to voices. Now, now you could say, oh, evil, evil, you know, get the, get your brooms out and say evil. Now we can blame a bunch of people at this point. All right. Is it the voiceover's fault for undercutting? Yes. Because by undercutting, where's that money going? You're either going to give it back to the client, but there's no guarantee the client's going to get that money, especially if you're working with Voices.com. Or, you know, you know you're, vo- you're undercutting their, even their budget. It's like, oh, yeah, you, I, I'll, I'll pay $250 for this job, but, uh, you know, how about I just do it for 100 It's like, you know, is it, is it the voiceover? It's a voiceover's fault because they, uh, they are undercutting for the sake not to give the client uh, more money, but to beat out the other fellow voiceover actors to try and be the $100 payment so you can get you can make more money off of me and I'm okay with that. So it's a little bit the voiceover fault. Yes, undercutting you or giving money to someone else. Is it the client's fault? Absolutely. By choosing voices to represent them, they are not putting up the jobs themselves and and being honest with us voiceovers about the true budget. There's a there's a there's a function in voices.com for you to put up your job yourself and then you will know the true budget and you will know how much it is worth. And is it voices.com's fault? Yes, yes, it's all of our faults. They put it out for the exact, and they should be putting it out for the exact budget. However, it is an additional service. It is something that the client's like, you know what? I don't want to put up an audition. I don't want to write down the crap. I don't want to listen to all this stuff. Why don't I just give you extra money? You take it out of the budget, and I'll go ahead and you just give me like five or six people that I can listen to, and I'll totally do it. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're asking for it to be easier for them. And they're willing to part with money and willing to be like, you know what? Yeah, just take it out of whatever the voiceover is going to do. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's an extra option for clients. So it warrants employees. Now, this is the choice is yours for this. And you could say this horrible business practice, but this is just business practice, unfortunately. Uh, if agencies had agents and then they had a bunch of middle people to talk with agents about it, they'd probably charge extra if you wanted to use the middle people. Now, how do I get my money? That's the big one. How am I going to get my money? What do I got to do to get my money? Well, Voices escrows the payment for you. And then once the job is complete, you ask the client to release the payment. And then it goes through PayPal. And PayPal takes their little percentage like PayPal does. And uh, then you've, you're done with the job. It does require you to tell the client to release the payment. That's the one thing they have to do when they're done. And sometimes it's a pain in the ass. Sometimes clients just forget when they're done. They just got their stuff and then you have to you have to complain about the tell them like it's been three months. I haven't got my money. And sometimes and I think a lot of times, depending on how long the, the session is, how long it's been since you've gotten the payment, you can ask Voices.com and be like, hey, I have I've emailed three, four times. I haven't gotten any situation from them. Can you just release the payment? Because the money's there, right? Now, that brings us to customer service. How is their customer service? Well, usually it's pretty spot on. They're good people. I've I've had a few times where I've had to call a couple of times, and I've had a couple of complaints. And, you know, sometimes they're good people. Sometimes they're not. Similar with technical problems, I've called and been like, oh, why, this isn't working. Why isn't this working? And then they'll be like, yeah, you know, it's, it's never worked. Sometimes. And I was just like, no, it's always worked. Just help. You know, and then after, once you get to the right people, you'll be able to get people to actually help. But similar to any kind of customer technical difficulty, they're always going to look at your computer as a problem, which sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. But I'm a jerk when it comes to customer service. And I'm like, yeah, let's get this crap rolling. And sometimes I've had really good customer service people with voices. And sometimes I've just kind of lax, lackadaisical people from uh from voices, but their customer service when I have needed them for the hard stuff, you know, to, you know, where a client's like, I want to do an extra hundred, hundred, hundred words. And I'm like, oh, it'll cost you an extra 75 bucks. Then if I call up voices, they'll be like, yeah, we'll do that. We'll, 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 we'll get it started because they have to add in the money. You can't just add it in later. Um, 
Yeah, but you get your money from PayPal within a couple of days after the release of the payment, usually less than a week. It used to be two weeks, but now it's just regular a week. Now, is it worth it? That's a big question. Should I spend all this money? It's $350 to $400. Is it worth it? I think yes, only if you have a quality home studio, you have time to audition, you have the skills to back it up, you've taken classes and whatnot, and you are non-union. No, if you are union, unless, of course, you're FICOR, which in that case, who knows? Uh, I don't know how you live with yourself <laughs> being FICOR and just taking non-union jobs and union jobs and just enjoying your cake and eating it too. But, um, you know, you don't join it if you don't have any time or if you're not familiar with editing and if you don't have a studio, don't join it. If you're willing to get into this rigmarole racket of a grind, then you're going to have to do so. There's going to have to be a quick learning process. And once and once you start the subscription, you got a year of it. Uh, you better start learning editing as quickly as possible and learn how to do this stuff as quickly as possible, because the faster you get it started, the faster you start practicing at it, the more likely you'll be able to get in and out and do auditions very quickly. So, uh, yeah, you have to you have to have the ability to produce audio, edit and the skills to perform. This is a good investment. It, you know, what I'd recommend is like they used to have a monthly system. Take it for a month. If it doesn't work out, if you don't make a little bit of money back or if you don't get any thumbs up or anything like that, screw it. Take a, you know, cancel it and then go three months later. Work on your stuff and go three months later. If uh, you want to take the year situation, go do it for a year. See if it see if you get one or two jobs, maybe three jobs. Make sure that you are changing your strategies, maybe bid a little bit lower if you're new, and get. Uh, and if you make your money back once, twice over, then great, do it again, or don't do it again. It's really a matter of what you're willing to do. Don't just let it set there for a year, and then let it set there for another year, and say you're, be you're being screwed, because you're not. You have to audition. You're going to be receiving 80 to 100 auditions a week. So if you don't do them, then it's not their fault, it's not Voices.com fault that you're not doing them, okay? Yeah, yeah, because it's going to be a grind. That's right, folks, it's going to be a grind. All right, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been the Everything VoiceOver Podcast. The Everything VoiceOver Podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to head over to everythingvoiceover.com. Check us out there or like us on Twitter at Everything V. Um, I will have yourself a great summer, and thank you guys so much for listening. Mm -hmm.